As they led Jesus away, they seized a man, Simon of Cyrene, who was coming from the country, and they laid the cross on him and made him carry it behind Jesus. Well, I want to send you every blessing on this Good Friday. It doesn't feel right does it, to say Happy Good Friday. It's not really appropriate on a day where we remember such a terrible event, although it is good for us because it marks our salvation. But I am... Um, I wanted to share something because it didn't feel right for us as a church not to do anything on this Good Friday. Ordinarily, we'd have our march of witness with other Christians in the village and carry a cross through the street. So we can't do that today, obviously. But perhaps um, at some point today, you could draw or paint or print off a picture of a cross and stick it in your window as a, as a witness to what the events that happened on that first Good Friday. And, and maybe on Easter Sunday, you could replace it with a picture of an empty tomb just as a witness to your neighbours. Uh, as they walk by on their daily exercise uh, or whatever. Um, but I wanted to share a few thoughts based on this one little incident from a whole series of inc incidents involved in, the, in the, the crucifixion of Jesus. And it's this moment when Simon of Cyrene is pressed into assisting Jesus with carrying the cross. And it tells us, doesn't it, it shows to us just how Jesus was in such a bad place physically, perhaps due to all the floggings he'd received, etc., that he was struggling even to carry the cross. And, uh, and so Simon of Cyrene is pressed into carrying it for him. Now, Cyrene, the place where Simon came from, uh, was, a, a, was in North Africa, in modern-day Libya. And it was a place where there was a sizable community of Jews who'd been exiled there many years previously. Um, but they had a synagogue in Jerusalem, apparently, and they would uh, travel back for some of the major festivals in Jerusalem. And maybe Simon of Cyrene has travelled back for the Passover festival. Maybe he's just arriving, and that's why it says he's coming from the countryside. Uh, or maybe he's staying in a village outside Jerusalem and travelling in for the festivities. And so Simon perhaps is, is, is expecting a normal day or a day of celebration, at least. And suddenly he finds himself overtaken by these events. And... Uh, having to play a part in the death of this individual he's never met. Terrible. And the first thing I'd want to say about this then is that um, that perhaps it, it should be right for us today that that Jesus' death interrupts and invades our day. I don't know about you, but the sun is shining, streaming through my window. I can hear people mowing their lawn, the birds singing. It's not really right on a Good Friday for the the pain of Jesus, the suffering of Jesus, not to invade our consciousness and for us to have to carry with Jesus something of the, the pain of that day and enter into it through our imagination, if nothing else. So allow some time today to reflect on the suffering of Jesus. And I'm going to play some um, some music after this, at the end of this video with some photos just to give us a bit of time and space to do that. The second thing I want to say is that obviously Simon of Cyrene is, uh, we know not just where he came from, but what his first name was. And why do we know that? Well, presumably because he was known to the community of the early church. Uh, perhaps he was a Christian or became a Christian. Maybe he became a Christian as a result of these very events. I don't know about you, but if I was forced against my will to have to participate in the execution of an individual, I'd want to know who this individual was. I want to know why they were being crucified, what what the point of all this was, because I'd played a key role in it. And, and perhaps that was the catalyst for Simon becoming a Christian. Um, Mark uh, mentions to us an interesting fact that he was the father of Alexander and Rufus. And so it sounds as though this, there's a family who become known to the, the, the Christians, the early Christians. And it may be that these, they are the men of Cyrene or some of the men of Cyrene who lead an evangelistic campaign in Antioch later in the book of Acts and uh, lead to its evangelization. Maybe um, the Rufus, who is the son of Simon of Cyrene, is the same Rufus that Paul mentions in Romans 16 in his greetings. We don't know. But the fact that Simon is mentioned indicates that, that what began as an involuntary sort of involvement in the in Jesus' death became a voluntary faith. And it's interesting that um, in Luke chapter 9, uh, there's an echo here of, of Luke chapter 9, where Jesus for, um, foretells of his crucifixion um, and then immediately follows that by saying, if any would follow me, any, if any of you would be my followers, you must deny yourselves and pick up your cross and follow me. And here is Simon um, kind of living in the echo of that prophecy coming to pass, Jesus is being crucified, 
the things that Jesus said were going to happen have happened. And here is one picking up the cross of Jesus, as it were, following in his footsteps. And so today, as well as allowing the pain of Jesus to interrupt our day, let's remember also when Jesus said, pick up your cross, he said, pick it up daily. That it's the way of the cross um, that should characterise our Christian discipleship. Sometimes we make the mistake of thinking, well, Jesus died in our place so that we don't have to suffer. Whereas actually Jesus said, though I've saved you, you're called now to pick up your cross daily and follow me. Uh, and that means that the Christian life is one of voluntary, a voluntary um, shouldering of the, of the burden of service and suffering for the sake of the kingdom. It's uh, a voluntary as assumption of the responsibility of the work of Christ in the world, a sharing in his ministry uh, and its transformation. And we can do that today, not um, um, recognising that we do so in hope, that it's, it's not a meaningless suffering or service, but actually it leads to a resurrection life and joy. Uh, as Tony Campolo uh, used to say, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. And so uh, our faith is a Good Friday faith. And so today let's pick up our cross and follow in the footsteps of Jesus, allowing his pain and suffering to invade our otherwise comfortable day, perhaps, but also to inspire us to live lives of service and sacrifice for the sake of this Jesus in the world.